main focus point today concerns this topic, how natural gas is powering the AI data center boom. And we know that AI and cloud data centers are expanding rapidly. And that means the demand for energy to power those data center centers continue to grow. And this is actually a contentious issue in a lot of states that are housing these these data centers, uh, places like uh, West Virginia and that area, uh, Georgia. And what's happening is it is putting so much pressure on the grid and the cost of electricity is going up. And a lot of that's borne by the consumer. And because these utility companies are, their profits are regulated in uh, and you know they can hike rates when they're, you know, the grid is uh, is pressured. And so in order to kind of get around this issue, a lot of these companies are either partnering with uh, the utility companies directly to, uh, to get that power, uh, centering them near nuclear power plants, for example, or they are actually buying and placing gas turbines on site. And this is happening with actually XAI, so uh, Elon's uh, AI uh, company. And now they, they bought a bunch of, uh, of these turbines, gas turbines, and they actually didn't go through regulatory approval. So there's actually a big problem with that. I forgot what state it was in, but um, that's one issue. Obviously, uh, most other, co- other, other, these other companies are actually going through the regulatory process to make sure that you know, not too close to city centers and the pollution because there's still natural gas is cleaner, but it still puts off dangerous gases still that you don't want to breathe. So uh, it can't be too close and uh, to these city centers. So that's one issue with XAI. But a lot of these other companies are still doing using the same model uh, to connect to existing natural gas lines, uh, but creating their own mini power plants, once again, using these gas turbines. And so this is increasing dramatically the demand for natural gas, and it's helping them bridge the gap between the current limitations of the electric grid and their energy requirements and and waiting for nuclear and uh, renewable power to be built out. And... But right now, natural gas is inexpensive, it's abundant, especially here in the United States, and that's one real competitive advantage we have domestically is, is, is that just truly abundant natural gas. Now, this is one reason why I'm generally bullish on natural gas is because there's starting to become more and more applications for natural gas. Uh, it, it's, it's quickly over the last decade plus has usurped uh, coal. Uh, the coal has become obviously a dirty word, but also with cheap natural gas, it really didn't make sense to, to use coal in most uh, most applications. And so natural gas is it continues to be uh, in, in high demand, obviously, if we're reshoring some manufacturing, uh, and that's going to increase the demand on the, the electric grid. And so this is just a, kind of the swing fuel now. Everyone talks about oil. And oil prices, they're important, and they're important to the cost of, of living and and uh, the feed into uh, inflation. But, you know, we don't use oil the same way as we did 30, 40 years ago, right? Cars are more efficient, uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're driving less per person um, because, we, you know, we, a lot of people are working from home, et cetera. Uh, and, but we're person um, because, we, you know, we... A lot of people working from home, etc. cetera. Uh, and, but we're person um, because we, you know, we love you. Person um, because we, you know, we love you. We, you know, we 